this is another closed process. In this process, air is being heated from a given temperature, 300 Kelvin, to a high temperature, 1000 Kelvin. And we are asked to find the heat transfer and the boundary work involved. Now, initial pressure is 200 kPa, but you can very well understand the pressure doesn't change because if you draw a free body diagram of the piston, you can see, again, this we have done in chapter zero, then we have a force of the weight on top and atmospheric pressure pushing it down and the gas from inside pushing it up. So even though the piston moves because of heating, it is not accelerating. So there is no net force on the piston. As a result, you can show that because the outside forces, the forces downwards are never changing. These are all the same forces. The inside pressure must be constant. In fact, you can figure out exactly how much weight to place so that the pressure inside is 200 kPa. To do an experiment like that, you can figure the weight out and put that on the piston. Okay, this is aside. Now let's quickly draw, a, a, a let's say, a TS diagram to show how the pro process will look like. And remember the constant pressure lines for the vapor in the superheated vapor region. So gas behaves like that, we know. So pressure remains constant. So it starts from, so this is a, let's, let's say this is a pressure equals 100 kPa. Uh, so, sorry, this is 200 kPa line. 100 kPa will be lower than that. So the process will be somewhat like that, going from state one to state two, temperature increases. Okay. Let's <coughs> evaluate properties but before we evaluate properties, let's get the equation we need to find the heat transfer and work. Delta U is given by Q minus WB. And in this case, we cannot neglect WB because there is a lot of boundary work involved. So one way to find the boundary work because the constant pressure, we know boundary work will be nothing but integral PDV which is pressure remains constant, right? So if we can find volume one and volume two, we know pressure, temperature, and mass, ideal gas equation will give you those. So therefore we can find this directly. But I want to show you another way. Just suppose we didn't know enough information. Suppose you only knew temperature at the beginning and end. We can show that we can simplify this equation. How? Well, we can write this equation as mass times u2 minus u1 and q minus wb is what pressure v2 minus v1 correct this is the boundary work so therefore q can be written as m u2 minus u1 and we are switching size plus pressure and let's bring the mass outside so we get v2 minus v1 you get it because we know volume is nothing but mass time small v specific volume if you take mass common and manipulate this equation you can write this as u2 plus p2 v2 minus u1 plus p1 v1 see if you agree because pressure doesn't change in this problem so i can write it as p1 or p2 and if you recall the definition of enthalpy, we end up in a simpler formula. Q equals M H2 minus H1. And for the PG model, for so far it's model independent. It's simply CP times T2 minus T1. If we go and pick up the value of CP and CB for air, so we go to the property tables. And for the PG model, common gases for air, you can see P is almost 1, 1.005, and CV is 0 0.718. CP is 1.005, CV is 718, inappropriate unit. So mass is 1 kg, CP is almost about 1,000 minus 300. So the answer should be close to 700 kilojoule. We found Q, and now we can find W because delta u is q minus wb we can use this equation wb would be q 
minus delta u q already found 700 and this is m c v t2 minus t1 right delta u is m times u2 minus u1 recall that and u2 minus u1 in for a pg model by now you must know otherwise go to table j and look up the pg model one more time the formulas you'll find that and once we substitute these numbers 1 kg 0 0.718 thousand minus 300 we get the boundary work to be about 201 kilojoule there we go